Alrighty guys, this is a story of Rosie Palmer. Warning, view discretion is advised. Rosie Palmer was born on August 1st, 1990 in England and she would be unalived on June 30th, 1994. She would be abducted, raped, and unalived after buying an ice pop from an ice cream van only 20 meters away from her home. On June 30th, 1994, Rosie was playing at a neighbor's house in Henrietta Street, Hartlepool, after being collected by a nursery school by her stepfather, John Thornton. At approximately 3.30, Gary Amrigo, the local ice cream vendor, arrived and Rosie went to ask John if she could have money to buy an ice cream pop. She was the only customer and after serving her, the ice cream salesman left and continued his route. Gary stated later only Rosie came up to the van that day. She didn't have enough money, but he gave her the ice cream pop anyways. She seemed just as usual herself, bright and cheerful. Saul Armstrong, who was celebrating his 32nd birthday that day, abducted her as she walked away making her purchase. It was in approximately two hours before John realized that Rosie was no longer at the neighbor's playing outside the house. John and the local residents began to search the local area for her and at 8.45 p.m. she was reported missing to police. The police search operation was headed by Detective Superintendent Doug Smith of Cleveland Police and involved door-to-door -door inquiries, tracker dogs, and local volunteers. Police first called that the Sean Armstrong flight on July 1st while conducting initial door-to-door -door inquiries during which residents were asked to answer a questionnaire aimed at tracking her last movements. On July 2nd, they returned while carrying out cursory searches of houses in the area. On July 3rd, two detectives spoke to Sean Armstrong. They noticed that his previously cooperative, friendly, and helpful demeanor had changed, and that then he appeared very shifty, on edge, and looking very worried. Acting on suspicion, the detective arrested Sean, and a second search of his first floor flat was conducted. Rosie's mutilated body was found in a bin liner inside an airing cupboard in the flat. Her shorts and underwears were found nearby in a separate bag. Sean denied any involvement in the crime and claimed that someone else must have put the body there. Sean Armstrong was unemployed with a dependency on alcohol and prescription drugs. He had a string of previous convictions to his name. He had been investigated in relations to sex offenses against children, although never charged. He was diagnosed with personality disorder and psychopathic personality. He had obtained the flat after his psychiatrist consultant wrote a supporting letter to the housing department stating that he was vulnerable. On the estate, he was called Tony the pervert and he was generally considered a loner, disliked or distrusted by all those who knew him. On June 30th, 1994, Sean, who had been drunk for two days, solid, partying for his birthday at different people's houses and pubs and clubs, arrived home by taxi at 3.30 p.m. Alrighty guys, follow me for part two of the Rosie Palmer story.